yeah Money, cars, and clothes, and all the cribs I never trust these lames and hoes, cause they ain't shit Plus they'll just sink our dreams of things and jump ship So we'll fly first class, full glass with blunts lit, float on What's going on, y'all? It's M.I.B., baby. Look, today I'm really excited to get to this reaction. I've been waiting to get to one of this guy's videos for a long time because I watch him a lot in my spare time. I've talked to him on Twitter. Really cool dude. I love his videos. I'm reacting to a video by Wrestling Gifts today. This video, what made SummerSlam 2005 so insane? I got into WWE a year before this, so by the time 2005 came around, I was well-versed in this shit. This is when Cena was still beginning his rise to the top, so you know how I was feeling. This is also the place where instead of going to court, if we want custody of a child, we're gonna take you to a ladder match. I love this pay-per-view so much, and best of all, especially the older I get, Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels, the world's best overselling. I watched those three specific matches last week on my own time. This video came out today. I'm super excited. But before I start, go ahead, like, and subscribe, comment below, which one may you see next, and I'm gonna get to it. Let's not waste any more time. I've been excited for this for a couple days now. Let's get it. The WWE in the late 90s up until the mid-2000s was always insane. There was always something happening that had no reason to be happening. From people getting their asses kissed, people getting lit on fire, miscarriages, to necro, you know, you know what, you name it, yeah. we got it. They're actually, also one more thing, I know this is an appropriate time to stop, but uh, I was actually just watching some stuff from the Ruthless Aggression era, not the Attitude Era. They threw some of that stuff in there too. I watched Brock Lesnar beat up Zach Gowan. I knew it happened, but it's the first time I actually watched it in its entirety. One of the more disturbing things, and I, I saw uh, the Cena versus Zach Gowan like a week before that where he was like throwing him around like a rag doll. The Ruthless Aggression Era was something else. I'm gonna need that one to get his credit too. There were always just these insane things floating around. It was the summer of 2005. Movies like The Longest Yard and 40 Year Old Virgin were popping. That in 2005 came out, the legendary hit stick, and it was so much fun. Mm. And 50 Cent was telling the world that he just needed a little bit. And on August 21st, 2005, SummerSlam, summer baby. Summer, the biggest party of the summer, live from Washington, D.C., in front of 18,000 fans. This is the second most bought SummerSlam show of all time and yo in 2005 What's the first? WWE was just hot and this summer slam was so hyped up there was so much excitement and we got a night that any there was there was so much excitement and also I can't remember if this is the one where Ben Wabi or Orlando Jordan and like less than 30 seconds I can't remember we'll see though WWE fan that witnessed this will never ever forget and let's find out why ladies and gentlemen excited for that one aka wrestling gifts and this is what made summer slam 2005 so insane. Act 1. At 7 years old, there was no reason for my ass to be watching a storyline like this unfold on television. The story that we're gonna talk about started in the year 2000. Matt Hardy and Lita are two thirds of Team Extreme. And Still one of the wildest stories ever. The fact that they capitalized on real life drama. And I didn't know this until a couple years ago. So as a kid, I mean, I obviously I thought everything was real, but like, this was real in a sense. The way it ended kind of disappointing, but. And even on screen, everybody knew that they were a couple. They were living the life, traveling the world as wrestlers, jumping off ladders and shit for no reason, winning championships, and they were on TV every single week. They were living out their dream. And as the years went on, the couple stayed strong no matter what happened. By 2004, they had been dating for four years, and after neck injuries and career setbacks, Matt Hardy and Lita were finally back together on WWE television together, and everything was I think I had that, that exact action figure set, by so the way. So Matt Hardy had a knee injury. Matt Hardy had to exit the WWE for a bit, so enter. Of course, the only man it could have possibly been. That slimy mother <laughs> Edge got himself involved. It was late 2004, mm -hmm. early 2005. And while Matt Hardy was out nursing an injury, his girlfriend Lita was getting nursed in a different way. Matt Hardy considered Edge to be one of his best friends, but that same best friend ended up being the man who Lita cheated on him with. In late 2004, Lita began traveling with Edge while Matt Hardy was out injured, and they became more than just traveling buddies, but nobody knew exactly what was going on. After a few months, Edge And the details are, um, the details are kind of sick, though. I forgot why I heard it. I can't, why, why can't I pause? I forgot if it was JR's podcast, but I listened to a whole recap of it. The details are wild. I can't help but feel so bad for Matt, especially after the whole being fired thing. I mean, it was cool that he got to come back, like, almost directly after, but what a time. 
Matt found out, and of course he snapped. Lita got kicked out of Matt Hardy's house. You can type it, Matt. Room. Everyone found out about the affair, and Matt just started going crazy. He told the entire world online what was happening. He was blogging it. He was making videos. He was exposing Lita. He was exposing Edge. He went bad. But the WWE got tired of this. They didn't want this real life drama to affect their product. And plus, they liked Edge and Lita way more than they liked Matt Hardy. So what did they do? To ease tensions backstage and stop the drama, they fired Matt Hardy. So now Classic he Vince. Lost, he lost his job. Meanwhile on television, Edge and Lita became the biggest heels in the entire company. They made them an on-screen couple. But after a few months, the WWE was like, you know what? YOLO. Let's make this a little more fun. We already have Edge and Lita as a couple on TV. One question I always wondered was, how do you convince Matt to sign back after firing him after something like that and then putting him directly into the storyline? I want to know so many more things just because this was one of the craziest things I've ever heard of in my time. Why not bring back Matt Hardy and make this real life beef a storyline? So on your random episode of Raw, Matt came back and beat up Edge while security tried to get him out of there. It looked so real and so legit, it was as if Matt Hardy actually invaded Raw to attack Edge. Every week Matt would just come out and attack Edge until a few weeks later when Vince publicly came out and said I think I would sign back too if I had a chance to do that. Hired Matt Hardy. And it was set, SummerSlam 2005, Matt Hardy versus Edge, and this was so hyped up. We thought they were going to kill each other. We thought it was going to be a war, and that they were going to throw the script out and just start murdering each other. It was a real-life love triangle playing out as the WWE storyline. And here we were. This SummerSlam. match and the setting itself, though, so disappointing. I'm going to let him get to that, but, like, when I went back and revisited this pay-per-view, Damn shame. 2005, Edge came out with Lita, Matt made his way into the ring, and before the bell could even ring, they started brawling. And this wasn't a wrestling match, which it should have never been. This was a straight up fight. And two minutes into it, Edge had Matt already busted wide open. He was bleeding everywhere, stripped mm, That is nasty. But that's when the match kind of got weird because Edge just kept on pummeling Matt. He destroyed it, kicks and punches and everything. And in just four minutes, Matt Hardy lost the match by knockout. When do you ever see someone lose a match in the WWE by knockout? So take this in. Edge took Matt Hardy's girl, got him fired, started making out with her every single week on TV, got Matt rehired just to beat his ass in front of the road in four minutes, leave him a bloody mess, and after this... So, how does that knockout come about? I've seen bloodier matches. Obviously, we've seen Eddie Guerrero in JBL at Judgment Day. Same with Cena in JBL at Judgment Day. I'm not sure if that's because it was getting too real. I need a little bit more context with that. But that part I never completely understood. Edge would go on to become the main inventor in the WWE and a Hall of Famer. Edge broke every bro code, every rule, every moral thing you could possibly think of. But it all worked out. One of the greatest heels of all time, in my personal opinion. He would go on to become the edge that we all hated. And after this, was bigger than ever. Meanwhile, Matt Hardy was just kind of there. SummerSlam 2005 was a public humiliation of Matt Hardy. Yup. Act 2. If you turn on the WWE these days, you will see Dominic Mysterio. Oh, yes, this one. In his best life. But uh, in 2005, when he was a little kid, it was a different story. I'm also going to go over this in the Chris Jericho Cena match, but when I was a kid, there were certain heels that when they became heel, I couldn't hate. Jericho being one of them and Eddie being the next. I was fortunate enough to watch Eddie's matches with 04 and 05. Luckily, I caught the tail end of the career, so I got to appreciate it, and I couldn't be any more thankful for that. I could not hate him. He was too good at his job. Five best friends Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio had a friendly match at WrestleMania 21 that Rey Mysterio won. As the weeks went on, losing to Rey really hurt Eddie Guerrero. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't take the loss, even if it was to his best friend. And jealousy got the best of him. And in May of that year, he snapped and began to destroy Rey Mysterio every single chance he got. He would challenge him to even more matches, but he never got his win. Nothing would work. He just kept losing mm -hmm. and losing. He would get annoyed and get a disqualification. We would get rolled up. We would just lose every single match. To Rey Mysterio. So what does he do? What would a normal person do when they can't beat someone? You know, they're trained to get better. Well, you take their child. That's what you do. This man went mental. <laughs> no, not, not mental. Now, this was another level. He went. It really mental. was though. He started coming out to the ring, saying he had a little secret of Rey Mysterio that he wanted to expose. He started doing these creepy ass promos. Also, looking back at these vignettes as an adult, these are so disturbing, but it's. 
Pardon my language, but it's such good sh**. Little stories in the ring, visiting playgrounds where Dominic would be, and when Mr. Mio would beg him not to expose the secret, please don't do it, but Eddie did not care, because he was mental. He told the world that Dominic Mysterio was actually his son. I'm your papi, Dominic. He got custody lawyers involved in everything. He told the world that it was his son, and he actually took him back. And I believed it as a kid. This is wrestling. So what happens? Do they record a fight this? Do they figure it out? I don't know. Ladder match. They have to have a wrestling match. But not just any wrestling match. Ray challenged Eddie to a match at SummerSlam 2005. A f***ing ladder match where the winner got the custody of Dominic. With Dominic sitting in... 2005 WWE was amazing, man. And he witnessed his two dads fighting over him. And when I rewatched this back, it, like, it was a mix of funny and uncomfortable. But uh, great entertainment, let me tell you that much. And Dominic kept the same face the whole time. Just rewatch it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Mm. This was funny. Okay, uh, it was a good match, but I thought he would include the part where Vicky missed the spot. Eddie hit the ground hard as fuck. I was like, where the fuck was Vicky? Also something I got to understand when I was older. Crazy. He got his son back after winning a ladder match. And now after 15 years, they're happily wrestling together. And it's amazing. Such a happy ending. Beautiful story, though. But that doesn't change the fact that technically in WWE lore, Eddie Guerrero is Dominic Stenhouse. Yep, exactly. I still need to have your poppy shirt. As many of you guys know, my favorite wrestler of all time is John Cena. You mm -hmm. know that, I know that, my girlfriend knows that. So much so that she got me tickets to go see him for the first time in Vegas. So I just want to say shout out to her. Oh, you got a keeper. I need me one of those, man. I'm not trying to miss Summer and Cena. I had a chance to go when they were in the Midwest, but didn't get my ticket on time. I love you more than I love John Cena. But back in 2005, my John Cena fandom was at the absolute peak. He dropped the rap. That was not going crazy. crazy. You guys already know the deal. Everyone loved John Cena. Me, my friends, we treated for him like our lives depended on it. And the thing is, we thought that everyone loved him. And then we mm -hmm. watched this show, and we got a wild, wild reality show. Oh, yeah, because this was like the first time, audibly for me at least, where Cena started to get mixed reactions. I could be wrong, it could have happened earlier, but this is the first time I noticed it. Cena versus Chris Jericho. It all started right here. And I love Jericho at this time, too. The movement came into the limelight, and it was here to stay. In the middle of the match, all you hear is, Let's go, Cena. Let's go, Jericho. This crowd was amazing. The face of the company was getting rejected. Okay, so at this point of the match, when you rewatch it, look at the crowd. Look dead in that camera spot. When they go for those chants, watch how into it they are. Watch it. After the crowd was straight up against Cena, they were booing him, they were hating him, no matter what he did, no matter what move he did, half of the crowd was against John Cena. Yep. This was the moment where most fans noticed. This was the moment where definitely the WWE noticed. This is where it all started. But as the weeks went on, as the months went on, as the years went on, it got worse. It got worse. Yes, it was. Batista and JBL, right? And SummerSlam 2005 was the night where Kurt Angle beat up the mentally handicapped man for four minutes to get his goal. I forgot goal. about this. I always forget about the Eugene angles. I recently rewatched some Eugene and Evolution clips too, where Triple H was beating the shit out of him. Mmm, what a time! After beating up a mentally handicapped man, took the gold Kurt medal back. And celebrated like it was the Olympics all over again. This is Kurt Angle was a phenomenal hit too. Other news on this night, Randy Orton and the Undertaker had a fantastic match with Batista and destroyed JBL. There were even rumors that Brock Lesnar was gonna come back, but nothing, 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 nothing can overshadow or be even more insane than the main events of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Act Five: Legend versus Icon. 
This was the reason why 650,000 people paid 40 dollars. This is one of my favorite matches of all time. To see two goats go at it. In July of 2005, on an episode of Raw, Hogan came back for a one day tag team match with mm. Cena and Shawn Michaels. And that happened to be the night that Shawn Michaels turned heel and hit him with a super kick. Mm. And the whole Shawn Michaels was back. The one from the 90s, the one that everyone loved to hate. And he was going to go up against Hulk Hogan. And, and heel Shawn Michaels, that promo he cut in Montreal. I can watch it endlessly. Just that sort of heat can't be replicated, and he soaked it all in. He did such a good job. Always love Shawn Michaels. Why do I always do this? The dream match. It was SummerSlam 2005, and after an amazing build-up that was intense, it was clever, and had everyone hooked. It was time for them to clash. So the original that one too. for Hogan and Shawn was to have three matches. One at SummerSlam, another one down the line, and at the end they would have the final steel cage match on whatever show it ended up being on. The plan was for Hogan to win the first one, and then Shawn to win the final two and end up the winner of the feud. But as SummerSlam got closer, Oh, I thought Sean was supposed to lose a third match. Could be wrong, could have read something wrong. Those plans didn't work for Hogan. Hogan started playing his games, and just a day or two before the show, you know what, dude? What if I just won this one? You know, just end the feud, brother. Hogan yep. did not want to do the series anymore. He just wanted his win and just call it a day. Just get that paycheck. Hogan wanted his W, and that's it. Sean didn't even want to do the match anymore, but he had to. It's been promoted as the pay per view, as the main event. They couldn't cancel it. It was on the poster. <laughs> The damn show, but he didn't want to do it because he wasn't going to gain anything from it. Sean was still a full time wrestler, he was going to go on and main event WrestleMania to challenge for title. And Sean 100% deserved to win this match. He was 52 years old and only wrestled one more WWE match after this, but now. Hogan just had to go over. So Hogan came out at SummerSlam 2007. Sean came out, and we all know exactly. Mm, you gotta show the shovel on the entrance, man. HBK was like, yo, I'm gonna lose. Might as well lose with some style and act like I'm about to die. The match started. <laughs> this one. Flying all over the tablets, making a mockery of the match. This was his way to. And the craziest part about this match is I read somewhere that Hope was like, oh, I didn't think Sean was overselling at all, or he didn't notice something like that. How did you not notice that? Especially when you throw him out of the ring and he does a somersault, you are bullshit. If you tell me you didn't think he was overselling. He made this big wrestling match more bigger <laughs> than ever. And this is honestly iconic. You would think HBK got shot. One of the most WWE matches you will ever see. Here you have HBK just dying, flying. You know, Hulk Hogan is bleeding everywhere. Going straight try hard mode. And he bled hard way too. So I think. The things that Sean Michaels was doing made no sense. But it made all the sense at the same time. And what a perfect way to end the show. The show was just filled with the most random, craziest, stupidest, but somehow awesome moments and storylines. And it ended with Hogan dropping that leg and he won the match. Sean should have won. He didn't realize that this was a mockery. He was just happy to get that. Exactly, did not realize the thing. Sean wanted to sabotage the match so bad. And he did. But at the end of the day, Hogan still won. Hogan still got exactly what he wanted. It shouldn't have. He still have. got the win. He still got the one, two, three, and if anything, Shawn Michaels made Hulk Hogan look like the most powerful wrestler of all time. <laughs> and if Terry's head, that's all he ever wanted. It yeah. doesn't get more insane than this. Summer's Live 2005. What more can I say? There will never ever be a time like this in the WWE. On one night where everything was just a mess, everything came together, and we honestly got probably the craziest WWE pay-per-view of all time. Only in wrestling. Absolutely. This video was great. I love wrestling gifts. I love the quality he puts into his videos. And this always takes me back. 2005 WWE, my childhood. Let me tell you. I really love this video. If you did too, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, y'all. Be smooth.